Is this recording? Oh, hi! We're going to do a quick review of the end of uh, Ender's Game here. And so we're going to start off with uh, six questions and we're going to go over them really quickly. Spend about a minute on each one. Okay, here we go. Discuss what is what it is that made Ender Wigan into the kind of leader who could end this war once and for all. How did all the decisions made by Graf and Ender himself result in his success? Ethan? Um, I would say that Ender Wigan uh, started off and he was kind of isolated from the group. Um, it was known to be brilliant um, and sort of resemble the qualities of his siblings. So he had some hostility, but he was also sort of gentle. Um, and his, probably his main thing was how he tried to win all the time and he would win to end all future other battles. So he was fairly ruthless in that, but very effective. You know, Ender was a great leader, but it led to ex his success in the game. You know, I don't know if he would have been a great leader during the war. Because Ender's compassion, you know, I don't know if he would have actually pulled the trigger on the buggers. And, like, to lead to that great of a loss of life, I don't think Ender's compassion would have allowed him to do that. He was tricked into ending the buggers planet, you know, in that final battle. Yeah, but to him it goes back to his battle with uh, Bonzo when he was faced with sort of his own mortality. Um, so he would have to. It would be in his own best interest to end the war and kill them all. So he definitely would have done that regardless of the point. Okay, fine. You win that one. Of course I win. Okay. Uh, compare and contrast Ender Wigan with other children in the novel and or his own siblings. What makes him the child who is capable of fulfilling the role of Ender? I think this goes back to my original point with Ender being being the best of both his sister Valentine and his sister Peter. Um, Ender was both brilliant and, and emotionally he was he had the capability of being hostile and sort of a ruthless sort of Peter side but at the same time he was compassionate enough to know when to hold back and to understand others. Alright, that's great points, kind of taking them all, but yeah, I mean, throughout Ender's experience in battle school, he's always advanced, um, you know, and he has to struggle through that, whereas the other kids kind of grow up into, you know, their own and kind of follow the plan, so to say. It's, you can relate yeah. it to school, you know, you go through each grade, yeah. where Ender kind of jumps grades at times. Well, you know? Ender's almost put in his own special program through the whole thing, again, being isolated from the others. Other right, other and that's, that's the, schoolers. yeah. So, I don't know, that's that's how Ender, I think Ender's different, is that, like, he's yeah. more advanced than the other children. Yeah. And he has because the, he has the capability to be alone, whereas other people couldn't necessarily do that. Um, you know, Petra was failing when she wasn't with a group. Same with the, the leader of the rat army, um, or the rabbit army, the Jewish guy. I can't even think of his name, Rose the Nose. Rose the Nose, yeah. Yeah, that's whatever. It. But the point is, is, yeah, he was the leader, but without his... You know, his launches, especially Dink, they would have been just oh, terrible. No. Yeah, they so would have been. Well, Dink, he operates on his own kind of thing. Right, right. But he had he had been attempted to, like, be the leader of that army for tons of times, and he'd go, he would always he turn it down. Yeah, he couldn't. Yeah. Um, all right. How do you believe Valentine and Ender will carry on their values to this new colony? What do you think of the new religion being formed around their books? Well... Um, again, being said, Valentine was always the sort of gentler one, um, and at, at the end, after Ender realized what he had done, um, sort of killing the buggers and sort of ending all their lives, and everything that he had taken to get there, he was pretty much done with being violent. So I believe, you know, peace was pretty much the only option for those two. Um, I think because he has Valentine, he's, in, he's like, it makes him capable of being more peaceful. Right. He has that constant reminder of Valentine's compassion, which is going to force Ender, almost force him into being more peaceful and try yeah. to hide his, like, or suppress his peace. Right. And, and use their skills and their knowledges to sort of advance the colonies around uh, the universe. Right. And I mean, he's almost um, kind of forced to advance the colony at the end. Like, the buggers kind of created this, like, setup so that Ender would find out, you know, through the whole mind. They set up and make this setup. Yeah. At the end, they so somehow like, got um, like into the computer yeah. game somehow. And it has and to do with the, the, the Ansible. Doing it. Yeah. yeah. Curious how that actually happened, but it never actually delves into that at all. Yeah. So it's interesting though. 
what does it mean to be a speaker for the dead? How do we speak for our own dead and why? I mean, I guess that leads into what we were just talking about, um, where he goes at the end of the book and finds the Hive Queen. Um, and so then he becomes the speaker for the dead, um, and writes his books about, you know, the buggers and sort of, you know, tries to help them find a new planet. Right. Uh, and especially, like so especially in his, his, the later books in the Ender series. And so how do we speak for our own dead? I mean, like, okay, you know, Ender killed the buggers off, but, you know, it's one thing to say he killed it, it's done with, but no, he's, he's compassionate about it. Yeah. He feels bad that this yeah. happened, and so he wants to do something about it. That's why he takes yeah. up this sort of quest. And to colonize the bugger world and like, right. I mean, it's know. one thing to s like you know kicking someone while they're down sort of thing. So you know they're dead and they're just dead. Like but there's no need to continue berating the subject. Right, and now he's trying to not trying not to make you can't really wrong the dead, but he's trying to yeah make some good out of it. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. sure. Yeah, atone for his yeah atone. That's the right word. Thought, that's a nice, nice word. Good yeah. atone. I like it. How do you feel to be the ramifications? Oh, what do you feel to be the ramification of Ender's ultimate victory on his fellow humans and on himself? Well, like I was saying, like you know, at the end of the book, his compassion was pretty much the only thing that he had left. Um, he he couldn't deal with you know he killed the buggers and he realized he did that and how he was sort of tricked into it. I guess uh, you know he realized that that just wasn't the way he could do it. So he you know like I said he, he's now I believe would be just more compassionate, more willing to sort of continue, use his skills to sort of advance things overall. Right, you know, they tricked him. You know, at the end of the game, they tricked him into defeating the buggers, and they used him as a tool. They used right. Ender as a tool throughout his own thing. And so now that he's defeated the buggers, you know, he's, he's like, done his quest, you know, or whatever. Right. Ender kind of chooses now what he wants to do. Right. He doesn't have to take up this atonement for the buggers, but he goes out right. and he wants Valentine. Well, Valentine kind of pleads with him, to, mm -hmm. you know, come on, Ender, let's do this. And but he says, so Ender says yes because Valentine's going to be there. He likes obviously right. likes well, Valentine. He has to go though. I mean, it's like they said, like, you know, to history, you know, a hundred years down the road, yeah, he's a hero now, but he could easily slander someone for. Com I mean, he committed genocide. So, you know, it was only a matter of time before the people of Earth well, ultimately either turned on him or... But I don't, think, I don't think Ender's really concerned about his reputation. Well, that's why he left the planet, though. What do you Because he, he couldn't handle being on Earth anymore. That's why he went away. That's why well, he yeah, he didn't, want, well, he didn't want to be on Earth because Peter was in control. Right. Right. And he didn't want to be used by Peter. Right. That's what I said in the beginning. Right. That's a win for me. I don't think so. Okay, we're tied, and I think we're going to end this right now. All right, thanks for watching. All right.